which was highly sensitive and classified. And as a result of that, I was in charge of um, aerial phenomena, you might say. So all aerial phenomena came through the A-2, which was the Air Force representative, and the G-2, which was the Army representative, myself. One day, we received a Twix from higher headquarters, which was called the Third Army Headquarters. Came down to division, and uh, actually Corps first, then the division, and then to us in the Air Force. And it was an emergency cable, or Twix, which simply stated that an unidentified flying object had landed soft landed in White Sands, New Mexico. The first initial Twix indicated that they had it under observation. They were going to watch it for 24 hours. Hopefully uh, there would be some type of life aboard and they could communicate with it and get on with the possible uh, acceptance or rejection of the craft itself. What happened, however, after 24 hours there was no sign of life. So it was assumed that either the ship was vacant or that the personage who were aboard were all dead. That later proved to be quite accurate and true. Now after it was assumed that the uh, ETs who were aboard uh, were dead, they then decided they must find a way to get into the craft itself. Now what happened was that uh, the exterior of the craft signified no way to get into the craft at all. But somebody had the, the bright idea of probing with a long pole, which we did, and they did. And lo and behold, uh, they did hit a button and down came an uh, interior door, like a trap door. And uh, there was access, uh, of course, gained to the craft itself. At that point, of course, a boarding party uh, was uh, ventured inside the craft and they found five bodies. Those bodies were diminutive in nature. They were basically humanoid. It was evident to the extraterrestrials of the Confederation that all governments are a manifestation of the material powers. Indeed, they immediately imposed strict secrecy about the meetings. They threatened people, including their own employees, in order to enforce the secrecy. At the peak of the Dark Age, the Keepers started to contact private citizens, scientists and artists. They also delivered messages and warnings to them, which were supposed to slowly sink into the consciousness of mankind. The Brothers of Space, as well as the Ashtar Commando, the Santina, and the Pleiadians belong to the Galactic Confederation. They are spiritually ascended planetary races, and they know the cosmic plan of the spiritual hierarchies. Hence, their task is to protect the evolution and development of planets of lower dimensions from global destruction. They are only officially permitted to land if mankind asks for help and is consciously aware of the meaning of its own existence. They are allowed to intervene if the whole planet is faced with global destruction because of unconscious influence or if large natural disasters threaten the survival of the human race. My first real exciting experience back in Highbridge, New Jersey, in 1956, USA, was when a craft came in and beautiful angelic beings came out. They reminded me of angels. In fact, they reminded me of my wife. They came out and they gave me a message of love and peace and compassion, that we should change our consciousness, raise it on this earth to love and compassion. Stop killing each other in the name of all these gods. Be good to each other. I listened and I felt very, very good. I asked where they were from. They said they had come from the, from the vicinity of the planet of Venus. They were golden-haired people with gold eyes, uh, uh, light, uh, light blue, and between five, six, and six feet tall. And the message they said was given to us to the people of Earth in many Bibles, many Bibles, 
It's in our scriptures. They came here thousands of years ago, and all our Bibles have their message in of peace and harmony, but we do not listen. This is the problem. We don't listen to what Moses told us, what Allah told us, what Jesus told us. We do not listen. If we would follow the rules and do what the scriptures say, there would be peace and harmony on this planet. The Galactic Confederation has developed a galactic rescue plan since our governments refuse to take notice of their positive suggestions, such as disarmament and environmental protection. In the emergency case of a global destruction by an atomic holocaust, or of a violent magnetic pole flip, millions of people will be evacuated in spaceships. During such action, over 10 million flying saucers would be sent out from the motherships, and people who are not afraid would be pulled on board through levitation beams. The spiritual keepers knew that with the beginning of the atomic age, mankind had arrived at the peak of the dark age. The climax of the separation had been reached. The new plan for mankind is the ascension and resurrection of mankind. The awakening and overcoming of the separation should replace Earth consciousness. Worldwide spiritual trance mediums were selected to receive these messages through telepathy or precipitation transmission in order for these mediums to spread the message of the ascension and of the new age worldwide. Pleiadians have always worked through me and around me as a presence. I do not have um, what me, most people would call physical contact. I've never really seen ships, uh, even though in 1981 when I was living in Taos, New Mexico, I awoke from a sleep state uh, in, in complete panic because there were three blue extraterrestrials in my bedroom hovering or, or putting their hands above my bed. So. I, I had that contact in 1981 and I never forgot it. I labeled it a dream, but I always knew it wasn't a dream. And the beings were small and very bright blue and kind of almond eyed. Um, and when I began channeling the Pleiadians, I remembered that event in 1981 and I knew that extraterrestrials, that other life forms were real. And that's what gave me um, the courage, the belief to allow these beings who said they were from the Pleiades to speak through me. During the course of our um, friendship and um, our sharing of my body, um, they've taught me so many things. And what I'm wanting to share with you today is that the search for extraterrestrials um, that people are impulsed to follow is a search that's very complex. It's not necessarily spaceships appearing in the skies or, or beings landing or showing up in your bedroom. What I'm discovering is that the merging with the gods returning, the gods returning to Eden, um, has to do with an infusion of our consciousness, understanding that other forms of intelligence can blend their consciousness with ours. We can learn to blend ours with theirs, and we come into a whole new level of operating on the planet. The basic message that um, the Pleiadians that work through me offer is that thought creates reality. They say they come from the future and they have learned how to penetrate uh, what they call the corridors of time and ride different webs work, web works of time and they've come into our reality to teach us about something that we need to change, that we need to implant uh, within our within our basic values of life and this is what they've given me the gift that they've given me of restructuring a revaluing of, of who I am 
It's not been easy, definitely. Um, I've changed so much that sometimes it's very difficult for me to relate to people and the ideas that they have um, not questioned over the years. The ideas that are instilled with us from the time we're children based on fear, um, our religious institutions, our educational systems. They never teach us to honor and love ourselves and to understand the mystery of the body first and then understand that the mystery of the body and the mind ends up reflecting itself and creating itself in the outside world. Part of my instruction at this time has been to speak openly so that others um, don't feel that they're going crazy, so that others can understand that there is this infusion of off-planetary intelligence coming to merge with our consciousness. Um, many of these beings have no idea how to make contact with us because we've been so programmed uh, to fear and programmed to um, interpret what we don't understand as something that would be bad. And unfortunately, we've been lost in this paradigm of thought that we are the most intelligent species that exist. And I believe that we're one of millions or billions and that the earth is now being reopened. The doorways that will connect us to other forms of life um, are gently and sometimes more than gently, sometimes with great collision. These avenues of light, these avenues of thought are being opened so that we can change. I feel that I'm an example, I'm a forerunner for what's going to happen to much of the population. Knowing the thought patterns of humans, that one message was not enough, the Confederation resorted to a much more extensive assistance scheme. After consultation with the spiritual hierarchies and the cosmic intelligences known as Archangels, a common plan was developed with the Archangel Michael to send his legions of light workers to incarnate on Earth. Voluntary extraterrestrials of all planetary hierarchies within our Milky Way helped heal the Earth with the release of a new consciousness on the planet, leading us back to expand the awareness of the planetary Christ or Buddhi consciousness. First, ascended masters who once left Atlantis decided to incarnate again as well as countless volunteers of higher planetary hierarchies to begin the return of the White Brotherhood on Earth. An old Bible prophecy tells of the last battle on Earth where the Archangel Michael leads his legions into the battle against the unconscious. In 1960, the first voluntaries began to incarnate on Earth with the help of the spiritual worlds in order to prepare for the coming of the legions. The legions would incarnate from about 1970 onwards if the vibration of the planet was slightly raised in order to change the world from within. The role of the light workers in this transition upon the planet Earth is quite varied. We all have unique and individual roles Basically, I think we've come to understand that the new millennium, the golden age, is not going to occur through some angelic force stepping down from heaven, waving a magic wand and transforming the planet. This change will come about through a shift in conscious awareness, through a change in our own individual perception. And many of us are now working to bring this change into fruition. The main commitment that we have now is to simply allow our being to be so perfectly in tune with divine will, with the higher energies, that we are in fact just vessels like the Holy Grail for these energies to flow through and manifest upon this plane. So in other words, I guess all changes come from cleaning up your own backyard and through simply allowing the inner light to really shine forward and forth and trigger that inner light within the hearts of all. Each of the millions of extraterrestrial volunteers who was born here is a specialist in the most diverse areas of science and in the art of living. At a definite point in time, 
the awakening call went out into the subconscious of these beings who were the unconscious carriers of higher knowledge and vibrations. Healers, therapists, scientists who know about the concept of free energy, light workers, living quantum accelerators are cleaning the earth. They are the teachers who spread the love of life, art and meditation. They are spiritual teachers, warriors of the suppressed truth. All of them, consciously or unconsciously, introduce the new age and raise the frequency of the planet. Many of these people have always felt that a part of them is different. At the time, I had never heard of or read about UFO, and I had an experience on a ski holiday at the Tauchen Lake in Salzburg. I used to pray a lot for people who were about to die, and I comforted people who had a calling in this life. In the evening, I went to bed and I prayed. I cannot even say how this sort of thing happens. Then there were six round flying objects, and out of each of these round flying objects shone a beam of light. In that moment, the beam of light intensified, and I was afraid. My fear was so strong that I was paralyzed, but at the same time, I also felt bliss. Then the beam hit my head, through the eyes and the forehead, and it felt like my head was bursting. And again, I had a strong pain and a feeling of bliss. And the spiritual realization, that is, a real transmission, a communication, an understanding, we are energy. And if you hold as much energy as we do, we will come and take you from the earth. There is only one possibility, love. I always sleep naked in bed, if you do not mind me saying so. The temperature was minus 15 degrees. I went outside onto the balcony and I was pulled up into the starry sky. I did not feel a cold, nothing. My husband pulled me back into the room. For three days I was supposed to ski, but I was like paralyzed, like totally absent. I could not think, feel, wish for, want anything else but this message which I had been given. And as I said, at the time, I had neither read nor heard anything about UFOs. Later, when I had moved to solar, I had a further experience. Again, it was before midnight. Something pulled me out of my body. I really saw how a force pulled me out of my body, and then it spoke in me, Rolf. That is the name of my husband. Together we have decided to further realize ourselves in the Christ consciousness, in his love and in his wisdom, and that is why I was allowed to remain here. Indeed, I had the feeling that I had already been taken away at the time. With the return of the light workers, all the lost knowledge of the secret sciences were returned to Earth. The ancient knowledge about crystals, healing, colors and sounds, herbs and flower essences, as well as electromagnetism will return. But this knowledge will only be a temporary concept until human beings achieve their own true completion. Different seeds of stars choose a much more difficult path. Since Atlantis, they have incarnated many times up to this century. They were students of the light masters from Atlantis and descending extraterrestrials. These souls were magicians, witches, healers, high priests, and the initiated of many centuries. They descended long ago to be a light for mankind on their path of darkness. They were often persecuted, killed, silenced, and laughed at because of their knowledge of the higher truth. They swam like fish against the currents of humanity. You are a member of a Rosicrucian secret society. Yes, it is the Rosicrucian Order, or Armok. It is the only official and true one. It was founded 3,500 years ago here in Egypt. The teachings are of Hermes Trimigistos. The entire spiritual line, let's say, is laid in order to find the path to God. Everyone has to find his path. 
These teachings are pure and real, and they are constantly updated, scientifically and, let's say, also on a spiritual level. Do you see a relationship between the contact to extraterrestrials and your religious coalition? Not directly. I think that if all human beings have a straight path to God, all this will fall into place. I do not think that human beings can determine it themselves. Somehow, they are chosen. Could it be that the extraterrestrials are observing certain people or souls here on this planet and that they are then chosen as messengers or contact people in order to bring the message to the world? Yes, they have confirmed this to me. They are observing. Then they choose people and give them instructions. Even during this century, great thinkers using holistic techniques such as Nikola Tesla, Wilhelm Reich, Victor Schauberger and many others have been persecuted and silenced by the lodges because of their inventions using free energy. The first group of these seeds of stars were wounded many times during their battle to slowly raise mankind out of its spiritual darkness. The first seeds were of great help during the first phase of ascension, bringing breakthroughs in the thinking of humanity. They were the geniuses of this century. Well, yes, the technical information that was given to me in an early life is coming out now. And they said it would come out over the years as time went by. And I'm working on a portable ACDC power pack, which would be good for all the people. Have plenty of electricity, no problems. And also a large one for a home, 15,000 watt uh, a power pack which would power a home, air conditioning and everything. Also an electric car. We're working on that and uh, uh, we expect to see some engineers in the near future which will carry a car from one point to another 3,000 miles without a recharge. Uh, most cars nowadays only have 100, 100 miles and we plan to put it in a, uh, a Chrysler or similar minivan for a family to go from one point to another. And also, my favorite goal is to build a 40-foot electrocraft, electrodynamic propulsion. No gasoline and no jet fuel. But the people won't, who uh, give us the electric, or the, uh, the fuel and the uh, gasoline and oil won't lose anything because it, it, will, it will take even more jobs to create this craft, the parts that are needed on this craft. And people would even get richer. The oil men would even get richer with this product. So there's no problem there of destroying what is already here. We're just going into something which is better and will not pollute the earth. There's no pollution. Uh, after in too, not too long a time, they will come down and they will all see us all. And we're expecting that. Uh, but we have to raise our consciousness to the point where they are not coming down and talking to savages. They want to talk to good people that don't kill each other. Then they will come down and we can join them in peace and harmony. Today, all of them are incarnating for the last time to accompany mankind on its last phase of ascension. They were prepared for this time during many previous lifetimes in order to help all people to become masters themselves. The time has come for you to wake up to the fact that you, by your own choice, will serve mankind. Millions of beings know unconditional love. Thus they will raise vibrations simply by their presence so that the purification process will start. And spiritually, no stone will be left unturned. What I share with you today, maybe it plants some idea inside of you, maybe it registers someplace with something that you already know, that your impulse to awaken in yourself and maybe you're afraid, maybe you don't understand it, 
Maybe you're concerned that you'll change too much. I believe in change, and I believe that the survival of the species and the transformation of the planet involves tremendous change. The message that the Pleiadians give is one of understanding the isolation that the human species has been uh, locked within. They um, call the present version of the um, human species modern man, saying that um, basically we spring from an experiment that began about a half a million years ago, and that the gods um, that created us are extraterrestrial beings who uh, in reality have forgot their own gods and these extraterrestrial beings are going through their own process of change at this time and because they created us because we're a part of how they learn we're involved and they're involved in this time of coming together <clears throat> what the Pleiadians have taught me is that this coming together this collapsing of time, this merging of consciousness that's taking place between all species on the earth plane has to do with something that is going to create, um, let me see how I can put it, a new geometric um, thought form, a new geometry of being that's literally going to move through our universe and change the entire course of our universe. They have told me and told the people that uh, they speak to that the human species um, genetically has very different organizational structure than we've been led to believe. They said that the um, evolving human, the human that will uh, merge, emerge on this planet, will have 12 strands of genetic material, and these 12 strands of DNA will activate within the human full brain capacity. Um, this is something that uh, is quite a lot to consider and yet I can say in the last few years of working with these energies that the process has begun to take place inside of me. I've changed. I have abilities that I did not have before. I have understandings that I never had before and I have assistance that's based on um, non-physical presence that I know is always with me. And I feel that the message I'm led to share with you is that these beings are around all of us. And that if you would relax, and if you reconsider who you are, you can open to this very wonderful relationship that's really a relationship with another form of yourself. Only a few of these people with a higher understanding are conscious of where their soul originates from. When entering space and time, they lose their consciousness. By increasing the level of vibration, they will all remember their true identity. While earthquakes and other events increase in intensity, holding the attention of the ordinary world, the extraterrestrials and the chosen ones will complete their spiritual and physical ascension into the fifth dimension. In the next 20 years, groups of people will ascend three times and be spiritually removed. Their subatomic vibration will be raised, their universal body activated to such a level that they will no longer experience death or disease. Indeed, death, age, and illness are experiences of duality in third dimension. This spiritual and physical resurrection I think it's important to understand that the planet Earth is receiving higher energies at this point in her evolution. Consequently, she's going through a birthing process, labor pains, earthquakes, disasters, etc. Due to these changes, and what's activating these changes, is higher energies coming into the planet. And these energies are also activating changes within every human being. These energies are also activating energy matrixes that already lie within the very various levels and energy fields of our body, of our being, and the light body is being created quite naturally as it responds, as we respond to being beings who live within the energy fields of planet Earth. But there is a lot that a person can do 
to speed this process up, and that is again through choice, through consciousness, through where we are choosing to align our focus, to align our energies. So the Merkabah is another name for your body of light. The creation of the light body is happening naturally. A lot of people are now experiencing bouts of flu. They're really bouts of light. They're going through a lot of physical changes, chest pains, which is really the heart chakra opening, headaches, which is the light coming in and activating certain parts of their brain. We are going through a huge shift in consciousness. It's obvious on the physical plane and it's obvious within the physical bodies of mankind. In 1987, the forerunners of the Children of the Stars and many consciously ascending humans activated the first period of cleansing around the planet. This was achieved by united meditation for world peace at a set date at countless locations on Earth. The results of this harmonious convergence were indescribable. The great changes between East and West started. World peace and mankind's yearning for harmonious change reflected the tremendous energy which arrived on Earth. The children of the light, as incarnated humans, helped these energies via meditation into mankind's collective subconscious. This energy is the first beam of light which Earth has received from the central sun of our spiritual origin. On the 11th of January, 1991, at 11.11 a.m., the magnetic network of the fourth dimension became activated. The children of the light, gathered by the thousands in geomantic energy sites on Earth, also called the chakras of the Earth. On January 11, 1992, hundreds of thousands of people gathered together all over the planet in groups large and small and performed a series of unified movements and together we opened the doorway of the 11-11. Now, ever since we first came to planet Earth, we've been evolving along a spiral of evolution that was anchored in duality. And this is the very first time the uh, activation of the 11-11 has given us the opportunity to move to another spiral of evolution anchored in oneness. So when we opened that door on January 11, 1992, it created a zone of overlap between two very different spirals of evolution. We have 20 years until December 31st, 2011 to move through this zone of overlap for those of us who now choose to graduate from duality and move into oneness. As we move through the doorway of the 1111, we are now graduating from duality. And as I said, moving into oneness, we're moving into new octaves of awareness. We're moving out of the patterns of dimensions into an entirely different patterning, that which exists in the spiral of evolution of oneness. Now the planet, of Earth, planet Earth is coming through the doorway with us and it's going to be shedding its skin at some time before the doorway closes at the end of 2011. And we'll find that all the layers of illusion, all the layers of pollution, uh, all the layers of disease on this planet, uh, everything that was based in duality will be dissolving away from the Earth and the Earth will arrive on the other side of the doorway with the ones of us who choose to make that journey and it will also be reborn anew. Because of the opening of the 1111, we're now living in very, very interesting times in which we have a superimposition of two very different worlds, that which is based in duality and that is based in oneness. And every day we're faced with choices of where are we going to anchor our being, in duality or in oneness. We also find that everything is new as we move into this new spiral of oneness. We find that the old Earth grid patterns, the old planetary vortexes, are now shifting to very, very new ones. We find that each of us, as we awaken and remember on this planet and step into and embody more of our higher truth, that we are now serving as anchors and pinions of the new. And we are in ourselves becoming new vortexes of oneness. And you can see as these beings activate all over the planet and as the new starry grid work comes alive that there is a new 
grid work. Of, you can see it as golden light, just measures of golden light which now encircle the planet. And as more and more of us activate and step into position, it becomes a whole radiant new star. They began to acupuncture the earth with dances of the sun. The rituals happened at the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, in Tibet, Glastonbury in England, in Arizona, Argentina and New Zealand. Around the planet, the activation of the gates to ascension was launched by the incarnated angels and extraterrestrials, accompanied by awakened ascending humans. The conscious activation of the master grid nets inevitably will lead to the Earth ascension into the fourth dimension, with or without passengers. But it wasn't only the incarnated extraterrestrials who started the acupuncture of Earth's geomantic power centers, distributing wise information and ascension into the subconscious of the living planet. What is behind the starborn? The people who are here today all have a tag saying, Starborn. What are the Starborn people? They are the so-called Starborn people. They do not come from the Earth, but from outer space, and they are aware of their origin. These people incarnated here onto this Earth at this point in time in order to fulfill the duty of which I have already spoken, and in order to do the work within the agreement to incarnate. Where does the knowledge of the starborn people come from? Do they get the knowledge from their inner self or from some religion? Where does it come from? This knowledge comes essentially from their inner self because they have awakened in this time and they are receiving the inner images or messages. This knowledge is also transmitted through mediums who are helping those who are not quite ready yet to find their own in themselves. Later, they are able to find their own path. Is it true that the people who meet here are from different countries but do not belong to any specific religious denomination? Is it also true that many people who have felt intuitively or telepathically compelled to meet in these powerful places of the world on this day? Yes, that is right. I do not belong to any religious denomination but I do believe in God. To me, the highest goal is to encounter the light, to meet God. What do people do here with these circles, with these circular formations? What do people accomplish with these circular formations? It is a very specific ritual which is carried out. It is the attempt to establish a connection with the earth in a fully conscious way. We wish to open all the body chakras, all the energy centers, and to let the energy from the earth flow through the body into the cosmos and at the same time from the cosmos through the body, indeed to transform the energy and to send it back through the heart center. Thanks to this strong heart energy which is sent out, a spiral appears in the circles. This spiral becomes stronger and stronger and turns ever faster, finally moving upwards like a light post or as a light ball. It is like a signal for the vibrational change. Uh. Could we say that the earth is being acupunctured? Yes, we could compare it to acupuncture. It is a good image. During the 1980s, the Galactic Confederation, the Keepers, slowly began to visit the acupuncture points of the earth. They sent, or rather beamed, the information of the ascension and the resurrection via pictograms of alpha rays from spaceships. The keepers send holistic codes into the human subconscious to activate the frequency of the light bodies. The cells of this organism have to adapt to the quickly increasing vibrations or look for another playground in the universe where they can still play with the concept of separation. Therefore, not only will East and West unite within the living planet Earth as two halves of the brain, but also the two parts of the human brain will join. At last, all opposites will combine their efforts and light and darkness will complement each other on a higher level. 
In welchem Zusammenhang stehen die telepathischen Botschaften? What is the relation between the telepathic messages that people should meditate and perform magical rituals in power locations and the telepathic messages of the return of the extraterrestrials or the gods of Eden? Well, to a certain extent, the extraterrestrials are sending these messages. The person who has a mediumistic faculties receives the message not only from masters and certain individual beings, but also from the Space Brotherhood. The Space Brotherhood is very committed to assist us all, as well as to help the Earth, to help us on Earth to make the transformation. Could one say that the extraterrestrials, or the Eden gods, as they are always described, bear a relation with our archetypal god figures? Yes, absolutely, because at times, when we did not know that they were travelling extraterrestrials, they were simply considered to be the entities coming from the sky, and thus they were gods to the inhabitants of the earth. When do you think will the extraterrestrials officially make contact with this planet? It is already happening. It will not be long. The ascent of ancient cultures. Long before our time, other cultures have experienced a collective ascension. During past golden ages of the cosmos, mostly only sun illuminations were possible because the physical immortality and transmutations were not yet possible. Therefore, in the old cosmologies, we can find only descriptions of the bodies of light of the enlightened. People can only be guided towards reaching greater devotion to their inner God through many reincarnations. That way, they increase the vibration of their chakras. That reincarnation is the path of slowly opening up to a new consciousness. Advanced souls, like the masters, were so transparent that one could see a glow around their bodies. This was shown as a halo in old paintings. Opening up to the inner cosmos and increasing frequency was the first step on the way home. Matter increased its vibration frequency on the way home to the light. Um, the heart chakra is actually what I feel is the gateway between the lower and the higher bodies. But we actually have um, energies that connect us through all the dimensions back to source energies. And these can be experienced. In, by simply aligning them. We have the physical manifestation, which we see as our molecular structure of our body, which is quite dense, but we also exist on many higher, finer frequencies through to source energy. That energy exists within, and the chakras, those energy centers, connect us all the way through to that highest source energy and frequency of being. The heart center is the center through which that divine love throws from, flows from the higher dimensions through into the lower bodies. All of our thoughts influence not only the outside world via the morphogenetic resonance field, otherwise described as our united universal super being, but also our inner microcosmos. Our thoughts, depending on the origin of their level of consciousness, activate the chakras. These in turn determine our density or physical frequency, which in the end plays a vital role in the hormonal balance and metabolism, as well as in other bodily functions. The seven seals are the seven heavens of consciousness within us. The risen masters of earlier cultures were aware of the laws. Like man, the planetary structure has seven bodies. These seven bodies are also called the seven zones of consciousness, or seven dimensions. Within man, there are seven physical chakras, or seven doors of energy which attract spiritual energies from the inner cosmos. These doors of energy move together with the psyche and the entire human consciousness. Every opening within the human consciousness increases the speed of the chakras. 
This opening up of the cosmic flower grails permits the body to acquire a higher electromagnetic frequency and take up more etheric energy. Thus, the human body has two sources of energy supply, the combustion engine and the cosmic motor of resonance. After December 31st, 2011, when the doorway of the 1111 closes, what happens is those two overlapped spirals of evolution will now separate and we will again wait eons for another opportunity like this beautiful one that we're given right now. For those of us who did choose to live in oneness, we will find that we are now aligned with a greater central sun system. Uh, planet Earth will be making this journey with us, and the first stop along the way, on the other side of the door, so to speak, is what we call Octave 11. And Octave 11 is when they'll be very active, building on the new, great creativity, totally new forms of everything. There will be some beings, when they reach Octave, 11, octave 7, who will say, well, I'm not really so interested in this. I'd like to still yet go further. So a small group of beings will join together in the middle of Octave 7 and unify into an even deeper oneness and continue on the homeward journey to a level of consciousness which we call Octave 11. Over the years, as we've been awakening, there's been a great deal of discussion about our light bodies. And we finally realized that somewhere we have these elusive light bodies and of course, uh, we've been reading books, how to find our light body and doing special practices, and exercises and eating certain foods so we can find these elusive parts of our beings. And the big joke, of course, is that, that we've been wearing our light bodies all along. We have them here. For so long, we thought we had this physical body with this little tiny flame of spirit here in our heart. And then as we awaken and remember and become vaster and vaster, you see that all along we've been wearing these vast bodies of light and inside of them is this little tiny physical body. So we're going to be stepping more and more into what we call the invisible. Uh, the invisible, the unseen is going to be seen by us and that means living our lives more consciously in our bodies of light, uh, bringing it all down all the way through the physical. The masters of ascended cultures knew that the ascension was a gradual widening of consciousness. The higher self helps us with the process of completion. If man keeps on communicating with his cosmic monad and listening to his inner voice or intuition, the person will be reborn in the spirit. The higher understanding will open to him from the inner cosmos and buddhi or Christ from within, also called the third eye. Then man develops into a superhuman. Through having opened the third eye, which is also called God's eye, man is connected to the cosmos and is able to read from the universal Akashic records. The Akashic records are all the saved linear knowledge of the past, the future, as well as the development of the cosmos and its plans. Humans who have reached this state were called the enlightened ones. These people have dedicated their lives to the universal serving of mankind. The total opening of these chakras in their highest frequency meant that the atoms within man also could not keep the energy on a physical level anymore. The completion was an ascension into a spiritual dimension. Some masters have been taken on board light spaceships by extraterrestrials. Other masters, however, of whom no grave can be found, have mastered the physical ascension. They opened the seven seals and rose into a higher state of consciousness owing to their activated light body. I think the majority of humanity on this planet are aware that there are other beings, what we'd call extraterrestrials. Some say these extraterrestrials are just future humans who have crossed through simultaneous time, that we on this level are bound by linear time, but when you move up into higher dimensions, higher frequencies, 
you realize that past, present and future coexist. Also too, when you move into higher dimensions and higher frequencies, you become aware of what we term beings of light. In other words, other expressions of the divine that live and exist in many other realms. The universal brotherhoods are here at this time in service to humanity. They have said that we have been in kindergarten, that our conscious awareness has been too low to be invited to join what is called the Intergalactic Federation of Worlds, that as Earth takes on board the higher light energies, the higher frequencies, as we bring through that shift in conscious awareness within ourselves and literally grow up, learning to treat each other with love, harmony, acceptance, unconditional love, recognizing the uniqueness of all and our individual contribution. When we have achieved that, we will then be invited to join the Universal Brotherhoods. The Easter Island statues tell the story of ascending Lemurian masters who achieved ascension in very old age. Fearing for the loss of their authority, our religious organizations and the secret connections to the lodges first destroyed or rather falsified the remains and the true evidence of the wooden and stone tablets of the Easter Islands and then the Alexandrian Library, many other testimonies of time and the true message of Christ. This message may be new. We are all Christ, sons and daughters of God, who have an immortal soul. And moreover, when we have reached completion, we become immortal with a universal body. The issue of androgyny is very important at this time upon the planet, simply because, as we can see, there is a need to balance the male and female energies to create complete balance and harmony. The energy that sustains us, that God essence, is androgynous. And we actually have, in fact, masculine and feminine expression of energy within us. A lot of people now are being guided to balance those energies within so that they are more whole, more complete in their expression instead of just being particularly female or playing a role as society has dictated. In other words, there's nothing a woman can't do there's nothing a man can't do, that we come from a point when we relate to each other of complete balance and wholeness. How does immortality function in the new millennia? Immortality can be looked at in many different ways. Most people are familiar with the immortality of the soul. However, as we tune to the higher frequencies, the higher octaves of light, many of us are now becoming aware that we're also physically immortal, that we can control cellular regeneration and degeneration and that there is absolutely no requirement for the physical body to either age or die. We, the light workers, have very specific roles to play at this point in Earth's history and I myself would rather finish the work that I have to do here than take my physical body up into light or just leave it when I'm ready. To allow the physical body to age and decay for me is simply poor time management when there are many tools and techniques and a natural state of beingness that can occur as we tune to the light energies and allow that God essence, the Christ consciousness within to step forward. After the chakras of a person have opened up, this person overcomes all physical laws and thus becomes one with the universe and a lawmaker himself. When the inner and outer cosmos are in unison, heaven and earth will be one. Men are the gods who are on their way home to their source, which in turn is themselves.